بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أصحابه وأحبابه وأزواجه أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين وارزقنا يا ربنا علما وفهما وحالا في الدين صل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه والتابعين الله 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 so we're back on the Ma'idah. We're back on that Ma'idah of the Dhikr of Allah. The table of, of which we nourish ourselves with Allah's Dhikr. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance. We talked yesterday, if you remember, about the Faqr to Allah. And the meanings of Faqir. And Allah Ta'ala gave us that meaning by name when He said, Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Oh people, all people, you are faqir to Allah. He's not just telling us that so it's a name. Why don't you feel that you are faqir, you are needy of Allah? Why are you veiling yourself from experiencing your need of Him every single day throughout all your chores and activities? The beauty about the power or the neediness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you're always with him because you always feel and experience the need of him even for blinking your eye. And that's why Sidi Bumadian radiallahu ta'ala anhu where a Shaykh al-Akbar rahimahullah muhiddin bin Arabi mentioned when he said ma lathatu al-aishi illa suhbatu al-fuqara he says the sweetness or the enjoyment of life is the suhba the company of who? The fuqara. What do you mean fuqara? The anbiya were fuqara to Allah. In reality. Allahumma inni abduka ibn abdika ibn amatik maadin fiya amruk Remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Allah I am your creation son of your creation my mother is your creation your decree is piercing through i am at your will huh? faqr continuous continuous the one who's faqir is not the one who calls himself faqir but the one who lives needy of his lord throughout his life and that's why and Sheikh Akbar went to say, actually he did takhmiz of it, he says, Ya taliban min ladhathati duna watara Or you who is seeking enjoyment of life, you want to really enjoy living? He says, Iza aratta jami'a al-khayri fika yura If you want that all good comes out of you, you want to see that? He says, Al-mustasharu aminun fasma'i al-khabara the real enjoyment of life is the company of those who are truly faqir of Allah. What does that mean, faqir to Allah and faqir of Allah? It means they don't wait on others to praise them. Do they do good to others or not? Of course they do. Do they wait on recognition from others? Of course they don't. Why? They're only needy of Allah. 
Why do they good to, do good towards others? Because they're needy of Allah. And Allah asked them to do good to others. Are they hurt by what others do or say? Are they ex do they have expectation from the creation? But then when they don't have expectation from the creation, do they hate the creation for not giving and not recognizing? No. That's not power. That's not faqr to Allah. That's faqr in the nafs. That's disease in the heart, not disease. Not, that's poverty in the nafs, poverty in the heart, not poverty, not neediness to Allah. He says the enjoyment of life is being with these fuqara, these people who are faqir to Allah. Why? Why is it the enjoyment of life? Remember yesterday when Taj was just bringing about Malik bin Dinar and when Malik bin Dinar said that there is Jannah on earth, if you don't enter it, you don't enter the Jannah in heavens or at least in that meaning. What was that Jannah again? Knowing Allah. What do the people who are faqir to Allah, needy of Allah, when you see them, what do they remind you with? Do they remind you with themselves? Do they remind you with the dunya? Do they remind you with others? What do they remind you with? Allah. He says, so if you really want to have enjoyment of life, accompany those who are faqir to Allah. He said, "Humu salatin wa sadat wal umara." They are the real sultan. They are the real sadat masters, and they are the real umara, emir, prince. To identify them, Sheikh Al Akbar says, "Qawm radu bi yasir min malabisihim wal qut la taqtur al dunya bihajisihim." These people are pleased with simplicity in their food and simplicity in their clothing. لا تخطر الدنيا بهاجسهم Dunya has no place to occupy their heart. It can only come by looks, no place, all occupied, full house, leave. لا تخطر الدنيا بهاجسهم صدورهم their hearts خَالِيَاتٌ مِّن وَسَاوِسِهِمْ are empty from the waswasa of shaitan. Shaitan tried years after years. Now there's, you know, they're not listening. Not listening. Might as well not lose his batteries on this guy. Go work on someone else who listens. He says, فَصْحَبْهُمُ وَتَأَدَّبْ فِي مَجَالِسِهِمْ So accompany them. Accompany those people and have adab in their majlis. And that's why the, many of the mashayikh in the old days, they say when you accompany the people of fiqh, the ulama of fiqh, ahlul fiqh, they say watch your tongue. Because you know how the fiqh is, jurisprudence. You know, the, those of you who are lawyers understand what I'm talking about. No? means if you say one wrong word, you're done. Hmm? So when you accompany the people of fiqh, jurisprudence, be careful. Watch your tongue, but when you accompany the people of Allah, watch your heart. The adab, adab of the heart before the adab of the tongue. We said, what is it? What did we say the whole thing was about tarbiyah? Tazkiyah is tarbiyah, right? Disciplining ourselves, polishing ourselves. I don't even want to use the discipline, I want to use polish. Because you have it in you, it just needs to be polished. Their suhba, their company is the treasure. Those are the moments that you can weigh with gold. He says, In their majlis have adab. And adab is not just how you sit and how you talk. What you think. Watch your heart. Not just your tongue. وَخَلِّ حَظَّكَ مَهْمَا قَدَّمُوكَ وَرَى And he says, no matter how much they push you to the front, stay in the back. No matter how much they push you, they want to push you to the front because they don't want to be in the front. Stay to the back. Adab. Adab. Oh, you're in a minute, you... Uh, you. Then he said, Usluk tariqahumu in kunta tabi'uhum. Follow their path. 
they're traveling they're in travel is in action to Allah follow their path if you are to follow but in order for you to follow you have to leave your claims behind take all your claims together about yourself and what you think you know put them bundle them up and throw them away Oh, remember what happened? Sayyidina Abu Hassan Shadir, rahimahullah. Sayyidina Abu Hassan, when he went to his sheikh, Sayyidina Abu Salam, Mulay Abu Salam and Mashish, to the top of the mountain. Mulay Abu Salam used to live on top of the mountain. And the story goes that Mulay Abu Hassan, he went to top of the mountain. At the bottom of the mountain, there is a well of water. He went all the way to the top of the mountain. It took him the whole day to get there. When he got there, he knocked the door. Abu al-Hasan, uh, Mawlai Abu Salam, his teacher, opened the door. He had never seen him before in physical life. He says, what do you want? He says, I came to learn. He says, go back, do ghusl and come then. Oh, yes. so going to all the mountain, do, what is this? He says, Sheikh said, go. He traveled down the mountain all the way to the bottom of the mountain. Did ghusl, came back up next day. Salaamu alaykum, alaykum salam. What do you want? He says, I came to learn. He says, what did I tell you yesterday? He says, go do ghusl and come back. He says, go do ghusl, come back. He sends him back again to the bottom of the mountain. Then he takes the ghusl, then he comes back, does tahara, everything. Then he comes back to the top of the mountain again. He sends him back again. Then it came to Sayyidina Abu Hassan Shadri, rahimahullah. He wants me to do this. I'm going to him and I'm a big man already. He wants me to do this from every claim of knowledge and every claim of wisdom I had. So he went and did ghusl of all his claims and all his delusions to him. It was, and all these things and then went. Then he opened the door for him. You can't go with your claims bigger than you. How can you go to Allah and you have all these claims? The path to Allah is claimless. For those who seek it. Because then you go to the book, you want to frame the book. You're not allowing the book to frame you. You're going to the sunnah, you're framing it. You go to the scholarship, you want to frame the scholarship. You're not willing for, to be framed by it. And therefore, claims, your claims are bigger than your objective. And hence, it's not a fit. It's not going to work. He says, what rok da'awik? Abandon your claims. If you want to have that saluk, you've got to abandon the claims. No one, no one can ever walk to Allah with claims. No one. Fi ma manafi'ahum. He says, always try to benefit from them he says الوقت. use your time wisely استغنم from غنيمة. غنيمة means booty you know when you win booty he says time وقت, time with them is like booties use it وحضر دائما معهم and be always present with them then he said وَاعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ الرِّضَى يَخْتَصُّ مَنْ حَضَرَ And realize that the pleasure of Allah pours on those who are close to them. Then he says also, this is all adab, before we go in. He says, كُرَّاضِيًا بِهِ مُتَسْمُ بِهِمْ وَتَصِلْ Be pleased with them. You can arrive by them. Why? Well, if you don't, no one, you're not satisfied with anyone. No one is perfect after the Prophet ﷺ. But yet still, Shaykh Al-Akbar is telling you, be pleased with them. Because if you're not pleased, it means you understand no one is perfect. There's no perfection out there. But you have to be pleased. Be pleased with them. That pleasure and satisfaction with them, that will take you to Allah. In أَثْبَتُوكَ أَقَوْ أَقِمْ أَوْ إِنْ مَحُوكَ فَزُلْ If they establish you, you established. If they erase you, you're erased. Erase yourself. If they tell you, move out of here, erase, get out of here, erase yourself from there. So there's not even remains remain. 
In aja'uka jo' he says, if they starve, you starve. Aw in at'amuka fakul. If they feed you, eat. It's baraka either way. Walazimi samta illa in su'ilta fakul. And always remain silent in their presence. Be in the dhikr of Allah. They sh you should be reminded by Allah Ta'ala. You should be reminded by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, always in their presence, try to remain silent, except if you're asked. If they ask you, فَقُلْ لَا عِلْمَ عِنْدِي I don't have any knowledge. وَكُنْ بِالْجَهْلِ مُسْتَتِرًا Shield yourself with ignorance. Means what? You protect yourself with ignorance? Yeah. What do you mean? Because we really are truly ignorant. What we think, we know? What do we know? Who knows? Little knowledge? Little knowledge hurts. La ilma andi. Remember the jawab of the malaika, alayhim salam. When Allah Ta'ala told them what? When about Adam, alayhim salam. What did he did they say? Qalu subhanaka la ilma lana. First thing they said, the malaika. Oh Allah, la ilma lana. We have no ilm. Malaika are saying that. Then he says, Wala takun li uyubi nasi muntaqida. Don't always be critical of the faults of others. Others have faults. You have faults. We have faults. We all have faults. Some people, their heart is so diseased, all they can see is the faults of others. And they see themselves perfect. Except the others are the bad ones. Everybody else is bad. But we are the best. He says, لا تكن لعيوب الناس منتقدا don't be critical of other people's imperfections. Even if their imperfections are so clear in front of everybody. Look always with an eye of perfection. Don't cite the shortcomings in people. Then he says, and don't see imperfections except in you. Believing that your imperfection is so obvious to all, they're not just saying, they're just not saying anything about it. So improve. 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 He says, Tanal bidaka ma tarjuhu min adabi. With this, you will acquire what you want. Adab from Adab. Adab is your sustenance to go to Allah. You need it. Without it, you can't go. With that, you will. He says, One nafs dhalillahum. Humiliate yourself through khidma and servitude. Khidma and servitude does not make you less. It makes you more honorable. In the old days, they said, Sayyidul qawmi khadimuhum. It's not a hadith. Huh? La yasuh hadith. لكن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم said الحديث حسن or more خير الناس أنفعهم للناس the best of people to people are the most beneficial to others you want to be best to others how beneficial are you to others those are the best of others what does that bring us to positive contribution again we've talked about it here huh? خير الناس أنفعهم للناس لكن the خدمة is also نفع right in that sense وَحُطَّ رَأْسَكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ بِلَا سَبَبِي He says, put your head down and make istighfar without a reason. You have no reason to do istighfar? Make istighfar. وَقِعْقُمْ عَلَى قَدَمِ الْإِنصَافِ مُعْتَذِرًا He says, لَهُمْ تَمَلَّقْ I'm not going to go through all of it, but the adabs I felt are important at the beginning of the path, so it's okay. Tamallaq is a term that's used by usually when people who have pets or cats and the cat or the dog comes if you're a Maliki. Yani. You have a dog, huh? No, other than the Malikis, you can't have a dog. 
ها اكسبت فور حراسه وصيد وتسترا طيب لهم تملق usually when that that pet if you have a pet the pet comes and they you know they put their heads and they do like this when you have little children they come and do these things to you the Arabs call that تملق they kiss up to you they you know they come next to you they push you out of being uh, out of admiration and fond and loving you he says lahum tamallaq have that kind of love and fun towards them waqul dawu bi sulhikum and tell them heal me by looking at me away in in a way that's of pleasure because that just being close to them that power of love that they put onto you that is healing actually onto you bi marham al afu with the medication of forgiveness minkum da'a jurhikum he says that heals the wounds ana al musi tell them i am the sinner hibu li mahda mahda nushikum i am the sinner grant me your forgiveness wa qul ubaydukum and tell them your little slave awla bi safhikum he's more worthy of your forgiveness fasamihu wa khudhu bil rifq ya fuqara so forgive and take it easy with me o fuqara after all you are faqirs to allah you don't hold grudges then he says la takhsha minhum idha adhnabta himmatahum assalam don't be fearful of them if you make a sin their himma is with allah their devotion is with allah not with you so don't be fearful don't be frightened don't be scared if you sin and make a mistake asna wa a'zam an turdika ishratu ishratuhum they are greater and more honorable that their companionship kills you that their companionship puts you down laysu jababiratan tu'dika satwatuhum they are not tyrants so that their might will harm you هم بالتفضل اولى they are more worthy of forgiving وهو شيمتهم and this is their noble nature فلا تخف تخف منهم فلا تخف دركا منهم ولا ضررا so don't fear any harm or any uh, any uh, 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 issue from them or any uh, danger from them he says be transparent with them and say haq to them don't say batil currency with them is not the currency of batil they might accept it but they'll throw it in the trash don't use impurities with them لأنهم أهل صدق سادة رؤساء for they are the people of صدق masters واسمح لكل امرئ منهم اليك اسا he says and forgive anyone who also harms you وراقب الشيخ في احواله فعسا and also observe the sheikh in his hal not just in his maqal not just in what he says also in how he goes through his own experiences فعسا يرى عليك من استحسانه اثرا ويرى عليك من استحسانه اثرا that you might have an athar an effect of that companionship he says then يحق لي إن نأو عني لألفتهم ألازم الحزن مما بي لفرقتهم يا سلام he says it's only right that if they distance themselves from me because of their closeness to my heart that I remain in sorrow until I see them again. Once I lose their suhba, Mata Arahum. Sidi Bumadiya says, When will I see him? See them. And how can I ever be in their company? Or my ear even hears some news about them. 
He says, Jallat anil wasfi an tuhsa ma'athiruhum. I can't describe their beauties. Ala al bawatini qaddalla bawahiruhum. What they do outwardly shows you how good they are inwardly. Bita'atillahi fi dunya mafahiruhum. When they try to show you what's great in the dunya, they don't tell you this and this and this. All they lead you is to Allah. Uhibbuhum, he says, I love them. Udarihim wa uthiruhum. And I am fond of them and I favor them. Bimuhjati, with my heart. Wa khususan minhumu nafara. And especially some of them, he's talking about his mashayikh. He says, Qawmun ala al khalqi bi ta'ati qad ru'isu. People, because of the ta'a, they became superior. Minhum jalisuhumu al adaba yaktabisu. If you sit with them, you learn some adab. وَمَنْ تَخَلَّفَ عَنْهُمْ حَظُّهُ نَحِسُ He says, whoever doesn't see them, it's his misfortune. قَوْمٌ كِرَامُ السَّجَايَا حَيْثُ مَا جَلَسُ People who are honorable and noble, wherever they go, يَبْقَ الْمَكَانُ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ عَطِرًا The place they leave behind will always be perfumed because of them. ف... يعني this is some of I think I think that's important as some of the notions of adab going into the path of Allah because traveling the path of Allah Taala to Allah Taala number one we mentioned it's a travel of the heart but two you require adab علم doesn't get people to Allah necessarily let me repeat it again and I know we don't like it that way علم knowledge is only a catalyst. It speeds your way. Your heart and transparency with Allah will get you there. If you have that with ilm, Bismillah. Knowledge means how do I perform it so it's eligible for acceptability, remember? That's all. Not acceptability. How do I perform my ibadah? How do I worship so it's eligible for acceptability? If you know, you can speed up your process to him. But you need your heart going with him, to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's, with this, I think, we should be ready to go into the first line of wisdom of Imam Ahmad ibn Ata'illah, rahimahullah, in the first word of his book. And he said, qala rahimahullah ta'ala wa nafa'na bihi wa bikum, ameen. من علامات الاعتماد على العمل نقصان الرجاء نقصان الرجاء عند وجود الزلل من علامات الاعتماد على العمل people have the book some people have the book with them the text خير so the first line right من علامات الاعتماد على العمل نقصان الرجاء عند وجود الزلل which means one of the signs of relying on one's deeds is the loss of hope when an error or when a mistake occurs. That's the first hikmah. Again, let me repeat it again so we understand it. One of the signs, he's talking about what now? What is this all about? About the travel to Allah. Right? The whole point of the, of the hikam is that al-maqsad, that you travel from al-kawn, from the creation to the creator. That you don't travel from the creation to the creation because that's what many people do. What does that mean? So they're first relying on this person. Things, they, dunya turns them around. Then they lose hope in this person. They rely on this person. Then they don't rely on people anymore. They rely on material. They, they don't rely on material. They rely on job. They don't rely on job. They rely on skills. They don't rely on skills. They rely on money. They don't rely on money. They rely on this. They, they're traveling their whole life from the creation to the creation. And you don't want to be traveling from the creation to the creation. This is an endless cycle and a vicious one for that. You want to travel from the creation to the creator. Traveling to the creator is the key. What does he say? The first 
line and about traveling to the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala or tazkiyah, one of the signs of relying on your own deeds is that you lose hope when you make a mistake. One of the signs of relying on your deeds is when you lose hope after you make a mistake. Does that make sense? Should I repeat it again? One of the signs of relying on your deeds is that you lose hope when you make a mistake. All right. Ihsan is what again? What's the definition of Ihsan again? Remember? Ihsan is what? Tazkiyah. But what is the prophetic definition of Ihsan? That you worship Allah as if you are? Number one, you're worshiping. Number two, Allah, obviously. You're worshiping Allah. And you're worshiping Him as if you are seeing. Who are you seeing? Anything else other than Him? Are you seeing anything else other than him? Because if you're worshipping him and you're seeing other than him or you're not seeing, then you're not going anywhere. You're in the circle still. And that's why when you worship him as if you're seeing him and only him, do you rely on anything other than him? If you found him, you wouldn't. That's what Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is. You see, the human self is comfortable with the cause and effect. This is classical conditioning, right? Meaning you, fire burns, okay. That means now we say fire always burns. Knife cuts, okay. Knife always cuts. So we're classically conditioned to take things and then say, all right, this is what the cause and effect is. And you drink water, it quenches your thirst. Okay. But the nafs rests comfortable on the cause and effect and forgets often the creator of the cause and the creator of the effect. Tazkiya is that layer that doesn't make you rest on the cause and effect. Because the cause and effect is just classical conditioning, meaning... The water did not drown Musa, and the knife did not cut the neck of Ismail, and the fire did not burn Ibrahim. Don't be fooled. The creation in and of itself does not have power. The creation in and of itself is powerless and helpless. The one that empowers anything and gives anything is Allah, Rabbul Alameen. Hence, the issue of tazkiyah is that you don't rest with the cause and effect, but all the time you do what? You go up and remember the creator of the cause and the creator of the effect yes it's true that when you drink cause and effect water it quenches your thirst but that's why sayyiduna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked you what before you drink what do you do ah i drink in the name of allah that quenches my thirst not only that you don't drink at one time take a break in the middle Thank him to remember, not just the cause, Bismillah, but the quenching of the thirst, Alhamdulillah. The drinking, the availability is Bismillah. But now your thirst is quenched even partially, Alhamdulillah. You want to drink again? In the name of Allah, Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Why is that? To, to separate you from thinking that this universe is only about cause and effect. It is not. The world, if any, is only about the creator of the cause and effect. And one day there will be no cause and there will be no effect. They're all creations of Allah anyway. So hence, you might not need to drink a couple of liters a day in Jannah to survive. You'll be okay. There's no need for cause and effect. It's temporary. Don't be fooled by it.
He tells you the Prophet Sallallahu to drink and to bring, mention Allah before, in the middle and, and, and after. So one was elevated to be a Nabi, one was doomed to, have, to, to hell. What's going on? Tazkiyah. Look for Tazkiyah. Look for Tazkiyah in the process. The reason is Tazkiyah. Why? What did Adam alayhi salam do immediately after he did what he, he disobeyed? Fataba alayhi rabbuhu, right? Fatalaqa Adamu min rabbihi kalimat. Fataba alayhi. Adam remembered Allah. What did he do first? Tazkiyah. What, what means what? Purification. This has happened to me. Let me pur purify myself. And then he repented to Allah. Thumma rabbu. Allah says then Allah Ta'ala elevated him even more. What did he, and that's why Allah says what about uh, Adam? Wa'asa Adam rabbahu faghawa. Adam did ma'siya. One. What did Iblis do? He wouldn't do sujood. Allah asked him, why didn't you? He went in further disobedience. Is there tazkiyah there? No, no, no. There's insistence on doing wrong. Notice verses 1, 1 versus the other. And that's why Allah did not call Iblis Masiya one in the singular. But he says, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلرَّحْمَانِ عَصِيَّةً Shaytan is ever disobedient. Hence the name shaitan comes from shatana. Shatana means to be distanced. And that's why shaitan is not just to, to, iblis, to the jinn and to iblis, but shaitan could be to human beings who go into shatan, who go distanced from Allah's obedience. And that's why Allah talked about وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيًّا عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ والجن. Every prophet has enemies from the shayateen of humans before the jinn. Because the distancing there. What am I talking here about? I'm talking about Adam salam went into tazkiyah. Muhasaba, muraqaba, self-accounting, purification. Immediately found out the issue, changed it. He became higher. Allah ordered the malaika to make sujood to him. Iblis did not. Your path of perfection, my dear beloved brothers, all of you, children of Adam, your path of perfection is your father's path, not the shaitani path, because that's not perfection, nor is it the angel's path. So don't pretend to be angels because we're not angels. We are not creations who are stripped from the power to disobey. We are enabled of making a choice. You want to be perfect? Your perfection is this. When you make a mistake and disobey, tazkiyah. You are better. You make a mistake, you disobeyed, what do you do? Like your father Adam salam did. Check yourself, repent, correct, you are better, close, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to do tazkiyah by action, not by claim. That's why he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qad aflaha man tazakka. Successful is the one who seeks tazkiyah in action. And with claim, he forbade it explicitly in the Quran. Allah said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, La tuzakku anfusakum. Don't claim tazkiyah. Because tazkiyah is not theory anyway. Remember what I said yesterday or the day before? It's not theory. It's actually the walk. It's not the talk. So how can you claim it? It's a walk. One of the signs of relying on one's deeds is that you lose hope in Allah when you make a mistake. You make a mistake, you start saying, you know, I made a grave mistake. I, I need to, I, I'm ashamed from Allah. I'm this, I don't want to go to him now. 
Why do you do this? Because you rely on your deeds, not him. Because you're trying to say in one way or another, and that's not how it is, how Muslims do it, but anyway, that if it was me, I would not forgive. You've done it not the first time, not the second time, not the third time, not the tenth time, not the hundredth time, not the thousandth time. You keep doing it. So if I was me, I'm not going to forgive you. Allah is not a human being. He's the creator of human beings. That's why Allah did not say He's ghafir only. Ghafir means what? Forgiving. Ghafir al-dhamb. He didn't just say He's ghafir. He says He's ghafoor. Most forgiving. Ghafoor means what? Ghafir means someone who is forgiving often. Ghafoor Absolutely forgiving, but not just Ghafur, Ghaffar. Mubalagha, even more exaggerative form of Maghfira, of forgiveness, in a way that's not quantifiable to start with. The more you sin and you go to Him, the more He forgives you. As long as you go back to Him and genuinely repent, you, you are forgiven. Do you sin it again? Go to him. Ask genuinely. You're forgiven again. What if you do it a trillion time? Go back to him. He'll forgive you again. What if you do it a quintillion time? Go to him. He'll forgive you again. That's his, the creator. So the point is not that you don't do good deeds. No, you're supposed to do good deeds. But do you know that your good deed is totally complete and accepted do you know that this deed of yours that you did that's you're so relying on i fasted this ramadan so well now he owes me <laughs> this is the first time i give my full zakah and even some hey, now i have extra bonus You're not doing him a favor. Ibadat are not for Allah in that sense. Ibadat, acts of worship are so it polishes you. It doesn't add or decrease from him. When you pray, it does not increase Allah's dominion. When you pray, you discipline your ruthless and arrogant self, if it is not your, your good selves, myself. You discipline that self to stand before him and plead for his forgiveness. You discipline yourself to go bow down out of humility before him. You polish yourself when you go into sujood and you beg him and you say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Ya Allah, you are the supreme Lord, not no one else. It helps you. It doesn't help him. He prescribed these acts of worship for you as gateways for you to polish yourself, purify yourself, acquire that transparency so you can be eligible to be in his closeness. When you give that money for zakah or sadaqah against your hands and the hands are going this way and you're pulling uh, or the yameen is pulling and the yasar is going like this and huh? Yeah. when you give it you're polishing yourself you're cleaning your heart from attachment to perishables perishable items temporary and perishable go ahead hold on to them if you really something take them with you to the grave show them to, uh, to the malaika munkar wa nakir say I got some money would you like some Currency is not available. That currency is invalid there. Outdated. Never was valid. When you're giving, you're polishing your heart by, I'm not attached to it. Don't fool yourself and rationalize. Allah knows all your rationalizations and self-fooling mechanisms. He knows everything. You're not fooling anyone. You're only fooling yourself. You know that. We all know that. Learn. When he tells you to go to Hajj, when he tells you to do Siyam, it's not for him that he benefits out of. Purifies you, now you're more ready to be close to him. That's the whole point. The whole issues of Ibadah is that they bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? And that's why 
that when you do something, how do you know that this is the one that that this is a, that this leads to salvation? You know what you should do probably? Put your own deed under your own criticism first. Try to criticize your own deeds, good deeds, like you criticize others' good deeds. Let's see what you come up with or what you end up with. I mean, we're always harsh on other people's good deeds, but we're very soft when it comes to ours. All right. One of the signs of relying on one's deeds is that you lose hope in Allah when you make a mistake. So you've made a mistake, you start losing hope in Him. He would not forgive me. I'm not eligible for His forgiveness anyway. I wouldn't forgive myself. All these things is because you're relying on your deeds to get to Him. But is it your deeds that get you to Allah? Look at what Allah says in Surah An-Nur. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ سَمِينٌ عَلِيمٌ Had it not been for the grace of Allah, nothing you earned, His grace, Grace from him. At the Quran, the ayah here in Surah Nur says, which means, had it not been for the grace of Allah, none of you would have had tazkiyah at all. Why? Purification comes from him. Onto you. As a gift. It's not from what you do and what you acquire. It's his fadl. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُزَكِّ but Allah grants purification or tazkiyah yuzakki whomever he wants so he opened for you a path of tazkiyah that's a grace from him that requires thankfulness that's why Imam Muslim narrates in his sahih right qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لن يدخل أحد أحد لن يدخل أحد منكم عمله الجنة. None of your deed. Who? No, wait. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is speaking to the Sahab رضي الله عنهم, right? Sahab رضي الله عنهم. يعني أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وطلحة وسعد وسعيد والزبير. Big people. Not me and you. Just me and you. He's talking to them. He says none of your good deeds will make you eligible to enter Jannah. The deeds of Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, and Abu Bakr. Now imagine if their deeds are not, not, they're not going to make them eligible to go to Jannah. I mean, what, what, what about ours? None of your deeds will make you eligible to enter Jannah. They are shocked. They said, how about you, O Prophet of Allah? How about you? He says, not even me. إلا أن يتغمدني الله منه بفضل ورحمة except that Allah already graced me with His mercy. So even the أنبياء عليهم الصلاة how do they enter Jannah? How do you get close to Allah with your deeds? With what? With His mercy, سبحانه وتعالى. What does that mean? It's His facilitation for you. يا أخي. Who, taught, who sent you books and messengers to teach you how to be close to him? Who taught you how to pray to him, for him, to him? Who taught you how to give zakah and sadaqah for his sake? Who taught you even how to say good words? Who even taught you how to thank him? He even told you, say, Alhamdulillah, teaching you. To even, he even taught you the words you need to say to thank him the best way. Who gave you the power to stand up in that salah? Who put that thought in your mind? Who gave you food? Who gave you water so you can live and, and, and drink and gave you air and so you can stand and gave you this and gave you that? If he wants to show his grace upon you, he facilitates, then credits you. Let me repeat it again. If he wants to show his bounties, his grace upon you, he facilitates for you to pray and facilitates for you to do all these things. Then he credits you for it. You did it. He 
he writes it for you. If he wants to show his grace upon you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Latif, Allah latif on the ibadah. If he is so, meaning the ayah means Allah is so kind with his creation. If he wants to show his grace upon you, he facilitates for you. And then he credits you for it. One of the signs, so you want to rely on your own deeds? One of the signs, Ibn Atala says what again? You, did you memorize the first one? Because we need to memorize, right? Not just, we need it to internalize, but also memorize. Memorize helps to internalize. One of the signs of relying on one's deeds is that you lose hope when you make a mistake. Why? Because once he facilitates for you to do a good deed, it's his grace upon you. It's his grace upon you. If you did something good, you came here today. It's not you. It's his grace upon you. He's opening, he's, he's pushing you. Why? This is so important. It's not just tasawwuf, it's tawheed. Why? So you don't attribute to yourself power. I did it. What do we say? La hawla wa la. La hawla means no power. La quwwata, no strength except by Allah. If you do deeds, you said, I'm doing the deeds. What are you saying? Where's the power? In me. But the basic premise in Islam is La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The power is only with him, not with you. If he facilitates for you to do good deeds, but then you attribute it to yourself, you're saying, it's me who did it. And the issue is, that's where shirk comes in deeds. Right? Shirk comes in deeds. What is shirk come in deeds? Why shirk comes in deeds? You see yourself that you're the doer. Versus the journey to Allah Ta'ala requires annihilation. What do you mean annihilation? So we don't go into big Sufi terms because I'm not fan. I'm not a fan of big terms. I like simple, simple terms, and I like Quran and Sunnah terms as well. Let's go back to the Hadith of Ihsan for Sahih al Bukhari. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam define? How did he define Ihsan? Ihsan is that you do what? You worship Allah as if you are seeing who? Him. Are you seeing anything else? Are you annihilated from seeing anything else? Ihsan is that you worship Him as if you're seeing who? Him. Do you see anything else other than Him? That's shirk. Shirk khafi, small shirk. Implicit shirk. You're worshipping him and you're seeing other things. You're th seeing people in the jama'ah. You're seeing how people perceive you. You're seeing that you're acquiring more knowledge, that you're having more higher position, that you're... You do, 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 you're worshipping, but you're seeing everything and then him. No, 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 no. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants you to worship him as if you're seeing him and only him. Nothing else but him. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فان. This is the ma'idah of the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala. The ma'idah of the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala. Yani when we gather to remember Allah Ta'ala, it's a hadra or it's a presence. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فان. Everyone in that gathering is annihilated. Fan is all dead. The only one who remains وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ We hadra of Jamal, really. We ikram. Hadra of karam. Because if you are in the dhikr of your Lord, you have to get everything out. You have to be in His presence. If you are in His presence, He's generous upon you. But in order for, to, for you to get there, the jalal, the majesty is that there's only Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing but Him. 
once you enter that presence, then it's ikram. That's why he says, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ He honors you. He gives you so much. If you, because once you found him, you found everything you need. And if you haven't found him, you can, find, you can, have all, you can own the whole universe and you're still poor. All right. The first then thing, and when he says one of the signs of relying on your own deeds is that you lose hope when you make a mistake. You're not supposed to rely on your own deeds. Why? Because you're not supposed to see your own deeds. You're supposed to annihilate, be annihilated from seeing your deeds. The definition of Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you are what? Seeing Him. Do you see your deeds? Do you see your ibadah? If you see, you're not worshipping him as if you're seeing him. You're worshipping him and you see your worship. But he didn't ask you to worship him and see your own worship. And have your own worship fill your mind and fill yourself with it. He asked you to worship him and see nothing but him. Not even yourself. Because you don't exist in that sense. You worship Him and you see only Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see anything else, there is associations, there is shirk there. If He facilitates for you to do a good deed, this is His grace. Celebrate. Because sometimes... He doesn't facilitate for you to do good deeds. He leaves you as he empowered you to make a choice. He leaves you with a choice and with the basic guidance he gave you. And when you're on your own, we oftentimes make more mistakes than right. If he facilitates for you to do good deeds, then that's his grace. His grace you did not acquire because of a skill that you have or a merit that you've earned. The only thing is, is his generosity upon you. So stand in the station of shukr for him if he facilitated for you. Now you recognize that facilitation. That's why the first thing after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah. Maqam Hamd. First thing after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, what do you say? Alhamdulillah. Hamd? Hmm? He is the one who subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for you to do this good thing. And that's his grace upon you. You did not acquire it with any wit or skill or whatever it is you have. And therefore, if you rely on your deeds, what are you saying? You're saying, I guided myself. It's not his grace. I did it. Do we understand the problem with the first line? When he facilitates for you to do good deeds, that's his grace upon you. If you claim that you did it by relying on your deeds, you are. When you rely on your deeds, all right, so you did the salah and you know, you're expecting, uh, I did the salah, so you know, so it's, I have now some credit. Some people think that Allah owes them now. So you rely on your deeds. How do I get to Jannah? I'm going to get this because I did this. Once you rely on your deeds, it means what? You see your deeds. And Ihsan is that you're supposed to not see anything but Him. Ihsan doesn't make you see your deeds. Ihsan makes you see Him. One of the... If His grace is that He facilitates for you, that you see His grace, not His deeds, if you see uh, your deeds, if you see your deeds, it means you rely on them. And also it means that you put guidance with yourself. I did this, hence I receive guidance. Though Allah tells you to say, Ihdinas, beg, to beg Him by saying, Ihdinas Sirat al Mustaqim.
whenever he facilitates for you subhanahu wa ta'ala to do good this is his grace why his grace on you why because you're his creation and his create the creation is used by the creator he uses you whichever way he wants subhanahu wa ta'ala once you rely on your own deeds when you do good deeds what are you doing you're tr pretending that you're using him i am doing this now I, you need to do this in return for me that's not how it is he is the creator he uses his creation if you attribute deeds to you and you rely on them what are you doing you're saying, you owe me. You work for me. Na'udhu Billah. So you have now wujub. You, you owe me this. You owe me the reward for this salah. You owe me the reward for this zakah. You owe me this. You owe me this. You owe me this. And for this, for this very reason, so we understand, and Nabi Al-Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam closed this door entirely for you. Absolutely. By telling you the hadith that we mentioned. None of you will enter Jannah with your deeds closed so you don't say I'm doing this so you can give me this done not even you not even me so he separates you from seeing your deeds and then relying on them your deeds even if they're like the MBA will not let you enter Jannah will not be enough for you to enter Jannah done Alright. Anyway. One of the signs of relying on your deeds, we want to look at the differentials, right? Because you have many signs, differential diagnosis for all these signs. Because we rely on our deeds. We're trying to find the signs that make us rely on our deeds so we treat them. So we don't keep going, relying on our deeds and seeing our deeds and not knowing that we are. That's the whole point of Tazkiyah. It's looking at the microbiology or micro-spiritual biology or spiritual microbiology. So we look at the spiritual micropathies or micropathologies. So we can figure it out at a micro level, at a histological level. So we can see the, phys the proper physiology of it, so we can actually treat it. That's the whole point. The whole point is not that we have a lecture where we are just inspired, but that we actually have diagnosis of the problem, treatment, prognosis. How do we treat it? How do we go about it? It's practice again, it's not talk. Hence, that's, you know, we're try I'm trying to go through that with myself and you. All right. One of the signs of relying on your deeds. We don't want to rely on our deeds. Who do we want to rely? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah tells you, upon Allah you shall rely, the meaning of the ayah. عَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ You say, تَوَكَّلْنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ You don't do tawakkul on your deeds. One of the signs of relying on your own deeds is that you lose hope when an error is, happens. The question is this. If you do a deed, good deed, does it mean that your good deed is automatically accepted? You do a good deed, perfect. You figured out you did a good deed. Does that mean your deed is accepted to Allah? Technical validity and acceptability are two different things. Yes or no? Absolutely. You remember the two children of Adam. Right? We call them Habil and Qabil in the Sira books. Right? Alright. Did both of them bring a sacrifice? Yes. yes. Allah says, it qarraba. Both of them. Qarraba qurbanan. They both brought the qurban. The killer and the killed. Did they go out work? And brought a qurban, a sacrifice? Yeah. Did they bring it and sacrificed it and offered it? Yes. The deed is complete? Yes. Technically valid? Absolutely. 
accepted? No. From who? Only from one. How come the other one, he did the deed? Doing the deed doesn't mean the deed is accepted. Even if it looks good. This person is doing qurban. He's offering a sacrifice. What else do you want? It's called a sacrifice. He's offering that qurban, yet Allah did not accept from him, and he's a son of a prophet. A direct son. So you don't say he's number 37th. Huh? Because nowadays we, you know, this is how we sell ourselves. When it becomes about D and A rather than Dean, this is what happens. It becomes about what you're wearing, what kind of titles you have, and all the million protocols they give you. How can you look for truth in the middle of all that business, man? Doing the deed doesn't necessarily mean the deed is accepted. And that's why when one of them, the killed, before he was killed, uh, the son of Adam, what did he say? The direct son of Adam, what did he say? قَالَ إِنَّمَا تَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah accepts from the muttaqin. There's shart, there's condition for acceptability. Muttaqin, those who are transparent with Allah. Taqwa, if you want to translate it in one word, absolute transparency with Allah. Then, all right, let's assume that you did the deed perfectly. You mastered the deed. You learned your fiqh, mashallah. You mastered the deed. And let's also assume that your deed was accepted. How dare you think Allah owes you for that? If the deed was complete and was accepted, it's good for you. In fact, it's, does it help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Your salah, if it's absolutely perfect. And you did it perfect and Allah accept we you are mukhlis, sincere, selfless, present with Allah in it. You did not observe anyone. Absolutely you benefited from it. You are present. Does that help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or helps you? So if you do the deed perfectly and it is accepted, it's time for you to thank him that he allowed you to do so. Not that you think that he owes you for doing it. And then you rely on it. As if you now, oh Allah, you owe me because I'm relying on it. And that's Allah Ta'ala tells you, Fizur the Zumar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Balillaha fa'bud wa kun min ash-shakirin. Balillaha fa'bud. But worship Allah and be among the thankfuls that He permitted you to worship Him. That he opened a way for you to be, to stand before him. That he graced you with bowing before him. That he honored you by prostrating to him. Be thankful to him for all, for that opportunity. Do we understand each other? I'm not saying that you're not supposed to do the deed and master it. You're supposed to. But you're not supposed to see it. Because you're supposed to witness Allah, not witness your deed. You've done the deed, you're not looking behind anymore. You're not supposed to look behind anyway. I am directing my heart towards Allah. Why are you directing your heart to witness your deed? Master your deed and go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're supposed to master your deed. But you're not supposed to see it, witness it, let alone rely on your deed within your dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, it's lack of adab. Not only what I mentioned so far. Ma'roof al-Karhi. Al-Karhi, one of the servants, or they used to say one of the slaves of the Imam of Ahlul Bayt. Servants, huh? Servants. Wow. You know, من سادة سادة بين الناس عبدهم. Masters who their slave become masters. عجيب how that is. Yeah. هذا شو اللي فاي الوالد رحمه الله. My father رحمة الله used to repeat that. من سادة سادة بين الناس عبدهم. Sad masters, but their slave becomes a master. 
والمكرمات لهم طورا وعادات and nobility is their nature not just not nurtured only nature الأولياء وإن جلت مراتبهم الأولياء no matter how high their رتبة is في رتبة العبد والسادات سادات still in the level of the slave and the sadat are sadat he says نعم الكرخي رحمه الله was one of the servants of the أئمة one of the إمامز of هداية of أهل البيت when he died معروف رحمة الله عليه معروف الكرخي when he died he asked for two lines to be engraved on his grave you know in the old days they used to engrave lines or things on the grave ومعروف الكرخي كان من العباد زاهد وعابد وورشيبر you know pushes himself to worship Allah Ta'ala a lot detached from the dunya attached to the akhira in total detachment and all this filled his life is filled with good deeds wallahu alam ya but what did he ask them to write in on his grave he says qadimtu ala al kareem bi ghayr zad min al a'mal bil qalb al salim wa su' al dhann an ta'tadda zadan idha kana al qudum ala kareem he says i am going to allah Without any amal, I'm not taking all my amal I've done. I, you people think I have so good or lived all my life in such piety. I am going to Allah without any deeds, huh? So write that on my grave. I'm going to you, Allah, without any deeds. Min al amal. All I'm going is will bil qalb salimi. He said wasu avan. It's bad thinking, bad adab. You take food with you if you go visit someone who's generous, huh? In the old days. If you visit someone who's kareem, who's generous, you don't take a sandwich with you. I mean, you know, you're going, these people feed everybody and they give you the best food. You don't take a small sandwich with you. It's insulting. It's offensive. Huh? He says, so it is, he's, he's telling Allah in this line of poetry, he says, it's ya Allah bad adab for me to take my small deeds if I'm coming to you. So you, you know, you forgive me. Hmm? Mahout. Mu'amala with Allah Ta'ala, dealing with Allah. That's the whole point of tazkiyah. That master your deeds with fiqh, Habibi, but don't spend all your life with ABCs of fiqh. How long are you going to be in the fiqh of tahara? We're not done with tahara now. Come out of the bathroom and let's move now to the other issues. So, because life is not long enough to remain all the time in the fiqh of tahara. And you're still in the bathroom, still you haven't come out. One of the signs of relying on one's deeds is that you lose hope when you make a mistake. You're not supposed to see your deeds, let alone rely on them. Because your shuhud must be only Allah. You worship Him, Ihsan, is that you worship Allah as if you are seeing who? Allah. Seeing who? Allah. Seeing who? Allah. Nothing but Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. Why? Because he may use you outwardly and deprive you inwardly. And he may use you inwardly and deprive you outwardly. And he may use you inwardly and outwardly. And he may deprive you inwardly or out and outwardly. How dare you see your deed, let alone depend on it? What do you mean he may use you inwardly or... Uh, outwardly and deprive you inwardly. Al Hadra Rabbaniya may use you outwardly and deprive you inwardly. How so? Makes you an Imam, Alim supposedly, Wild, Big Man, Ta'at Zahira. You are in that Ta'at Zahira in front of people, oh, mashallah, huh? But he, Subhanahu, or, or other, even jihad, even other things, huh? But he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, deprive you inwardly from witnessing him in all that you do. Technical validity of the deed, perfect. Worshipping him as if you're seeing him, non-existent. 
He may use you outwardly to perform and lead and outwardly and deprive you inwardly from witnessing him or from annihilating yourself from him or from opening anything because you're not eligible for it. Dalil, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Aja'altum siqayat al-hajj wa imarat al-bayti kaman aman? Wa imarat al-masjid al-harami kaman aman? Kaman aman abillah? You're making the service of the of the people who do hajj and the help and giving the food and giving the water and this this is all ta'a zahira huh? apparent obedience acts of obedience you're making that like the ones who believe in Allah he may use you outwardly inwardly that may be because you're ineligible or because it's too difficult for you, you're not eligible from a capacity point of view, not from just eligibility. How so? So he deprived you out of mercy for you. And that's why he subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu asked us in many ways, they're indirectly, that we should not wish to have what other people have. I want to have what he has. Many people say, they come to me, they say, Oh, Sheikh, I, inshallah, my, my son will be like you. I said, A'udhu Billahi, akhi, may Allah make your son much better than me. <laughs> huh? What does that mean? To everyone. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best. Don't ever ask Allah to grant you what he gave others. Lack of adab. Being suggestive to him as what's best for me. He knows what's best for you. Ask him to grant you what's what? What's best for you? Why are you asking, Ya Allah, he has this, give me what he has. <laughs> what he, he gives you everything he has. And then you end up, oh, I don't want everything he has or she has. It's not just the thing I saw. There are other things I didn't see that he has and you gave them to me. Dealing with, the Tazki is about dealing with Allah. Not mastering the deeds only in the, the, what we do with the fiqh books now. And they're all intro fiqh books as well. We haven't gone to the middle level yet. Because it takes another hundred years to get to the middle level. Another three hundred to get to the advanced. He may use you inwardly and deprive you outwardly though. How so? He opens for you. He grants you. You speak to him. He gives you these moments of purity and moments of connection with him and moments of elevation and inspiration and illumination with him. And he conceals you from the rest of his slaves. Deprive you outwardly. You try, that's not for you. Closed. With him, he opens for you. So people, they don't know. And they might not think you're of you of anything. In the hadith, you all know. You might find someone who is, his hair is dusty and he's not looking the best. And people will close the doors in front of him if they, if they see him. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith says, لو أقسم على الله, If he asks Allah for anything, لأبرة, Allah will grant. He might use you inwardly, but deprives you outwardly. Hmm? He might use you outwardly and deprive you inwardly. And he might use you inwardly and deprive you outwardly. He might also use you both inwardly and outwardly or deprive you both inwardly and outwardly. Inna lillahi ibadan futana. One of the poets says, Talaqu dunya wa khafu al-fitana. Allah has slaves who are futana. Futana means they're smart. They talaqu dunya. They divorce the dunya. Wa khafu al-fitana. And they fear confusion and... And lost. Many people don't understand that Iman is a privilege. 
privilege that must be maintained. It's a treasure that must be maintained. They take it as a word and they live with it as a word and they sell it also. They commercialize it as words. But Iman is really a treasure that you hold on to and you live by and you care for. You grow. Like a tree, you grow it. You make sure it has the light, it has water, you irrigate it. That's how Iman is. It's the privilege that must be maintained. It's not a birth-given right. It's not a DNA right. It's not looks right. It's got nothing to do with anything except with your actual Iman with him. And when you talk about Tazkiyah, you grow your Iman. You now watch your Iman. You get a hold of your Iman. And that's where the poet says, in the in Ilahi Ibadan Futana, Allah has Ibad slaves who are smart. They divorce, divorce the dunya. وَخَافُ fitna. They feared fitan. They, because fitna is not easy. It gets everyone, the best of us. نَظَرُوا فِيهَا فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِحَيِّنْ سَكَنَا They said they contemplated and reflected about this dunya. When they realized no one stays in it. No one is everlasting in it. The good is not staying and the bad is not staying. The rich is not staying and the poor is not staying. The powerful is not staying and the weak is not staying. The master is not staying and the slave is not staying. The Nabi and Biya are not staying and the Shayateen are not staying. They're looking at all these things. They say, he says, when they realize that it is not a place of a permanent abode for us to stay, they left it as is and they took the good deeds as ships in it arcs of salvation through these waves of the dunya these are the arcs that you're trying to do all right he might use you inwardly and might deprive you outwardly story i'll tell you and then we finish i think our time is up I'll tell you a story at the end, though I don't like to tell stories, but I've been telling you a personal story every now and then, so that's okay, and you don't have to take it, because a personal story means absolutely no academic value, <laughs> especially when there's no authentic evidence to it. There's no authentic evidence to the Prophet ﷺ, you don't have to take anything. Quran and then the prophetic sunnah, that's authentic. End the story, next line. One of the people that were in... in where in the city that I was born in and grew up, that used to be sort of also, you know, not people did not take him seriously, meaning yani, looking poor, kada. he would sit after the Fajr all the time in the masjid and does his awrad. And you know how sometimes the, the khadim of the masjid after the Salat al-Fajr, he wants to go take some sleep before Zuhr. And you know, and if you're staying a little bit long, come on man, finish, go do your awrad at home. Go do your, your uh, zikr at home and come back. So anyway, one of the days, this, this khadim, this, this servant of the masjid, he actually, or the imam of the masjid actually, was it? He actually told, he roughened this guy up. He says, look, you know, I need to go. Why don't you go? For you, we finished the salah and that's it. We did the dua. Go now after the dua. Go home. And we need to sleep. He said, the, the, the narrator says, that this imam went to after obviously Fajr, he went and slept, took a nap after Fajr, and in that uh, nap he saw the Prophet ﷺ in his dream. And he told him, how dare you kick one of our people uh, out. And that imam, he said, he woke up terrified, kept looking for that man for the rest of his life. He never found him again. He used to come there every day. But now, because... Uh, he may use you inwardly but deprive you outwardly. You're not supposed to be known outwardly. Once it's exposed, you're gone. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Inshallah, we continue next or tomorrow. Inshallah.